Hello, my name is Steven Jens Jorgensen, and I'll be presenting our work on finding local manipulation plants quickly in the Locomotion Constrained Manifold. This work was funded by a NASA Space Technology Research Fellowship and was done in collaboration with Mihir Vedantam, Ryan Gupta, Henry Capel, and our advisor, Dr. Luis Santis from the Human Centered Robotics Lab in the University of Texas at Austin. Local manipulation is essentially performing locomotion and manipulation at the same time. To motivate our work, I want to show a short video of our previous work. This is Valkyrie performing a car door opening task. The robot partially opens the car door, reorients, and pushes the door fully open with the other hand. If you notice, the robot is either locomoting around the door or manipulating the door, but it's never doing both at the same time. After significant engineering work with this task, at the fastest, we can open the door in two minutes with this decoupled approach. So one of our motivations in this work is to speed up this door opening task by creating local manipulation trajectories. So what makes local manipulation difficult? For real robots, the configuration space is continuous, so existing manipulation planners work well. But for legged robots, the configuration space is discontinuous due to different possible stance or contact configurations. So the different contact modes make it difficult to use existing planners. To make the problem tractable, we reformulate the problem of local manipulation as follows. Given a manipulation constraint and effector path described by f of s, so this is f of s right here, this orange line, and s is from 0 to 1, we want to find a progression trajectory s of t, so how should we progress along this path, and a sequence of contact transitions so that the resulting whole body trajectory is feasible. If we can find the progression trajectory and a sequence of contact transitions, then we solve the local manipulation problem. To solve this problem, we use two key ideas. First, we assume that the locomotion approach is provided. This will define our locomotion constraint manifold. Second, we will search for admissible manipulation trajectories in the locomotion constraint manifold. With this approach, we obtain a load dimensional search problem. Should we take a footstep, pull the door, or do both simultaneously? In essence, our search decision asks, should we locomote, manipulate, or do local manipulation? So let's discuss the technical details of this approach. For the locomotion approach, we use a divergent component of motion-based walking pattern generator, or DCM. This one in particular was proposed by Engelsberger. The idea is that given a sequence of footsteps and temporal parameters for how fast to take the footsteps, we can obtain a DCM trajectory and a corresponding center of mass trajectory. Note that other locomotion approaches are also possible. The only requirement is that it needs to be injective. That is, given a sequence of contact transitions, it will always give the same trajectories. From the previous slide, the list of footsteps or contact transitions provide a center of mass task space trajectory. The location and timing of the footsteps also provide a corresponding swing foot task space trajectories. To mirror the locomotion approach in the NASA Valkyrie robot, the pelvis orientation is set to be the average orientation of the two feet. Combined, these form the task space trajectories for locomotion. Thus, task space changes along the trajectory is related to the joint space changes via a Jacobian matrix. And this equation fully defines the locomotion constraint manifold. Next, we define the manipulation constraint. If you remember, the problem definition already provides the manipulation trajectory, which is parameterized by a variable s. Similar to the locomotion constraint manifold, the task space changes of the end effector along the trajectory is related to the joint space changes with a Jacobian matrix. With the definitions for locomotion and manipulation constraints, we can now check for local manipulation feasibility. Given the current robot state, a desired footstep landing location, and a small movement or a small delta s along the manipulation trajectory, we can query if the local manipulation trajectory is feasible. We can perform this by discretizing along the contact transition time delta t, stacking the locomotion manipulation tasks in Jacobians, and performing an IK configuration trajectory. If for all i this trajectory converges, then the local manipulation trajectory is feasible. This enables us to construct, visualize, and learn local manipulation regions. 
Local manipulation regions extend the familiar concept of reachability, but with locomotion and manipulation constraints, making it a subset of traditional reachability regions. So in the end effector space, suppose we have to take this fixed contact transition, then the local manipulation region is the area in which we can maintain this hand pose while performing this fixed contact transition. Similarly, in the contact transition space, suppose now that we have to maintain this hand pose. Then the local manipulability region is the area in which we can perform a contact transition while maintaining this fixed hand pose. Now computing for feasibility by performing IK configuration directories can be computationally expensive. To speed up the feasibility check, we tried to learn the local manipulability regions with a neural network-based classifier. With this approach, we obtain a speedup of three orders of magnitude. Without the classifier, each feasibility check takes about two seconds, and with the classifier, each check takes about 1.5 milliseconds on a CPU implementation only. We have an accuracy of a little over 90%, so there's still room for improvement. The accuracy of the classifier depends on the complexity of the local manipulation regions, which depends on the kinematic limits of the robot and how joint configurations are solved from the task space trajectories. Finally, we can use a weighted A-star approach to search for a feasible local manipulation trajectory. As a reminder, the problem is now low-dimensional, so it can be represented with a graph. Here, the vertices indicate the progression along the manipulation trajectory parameterized by S and the SE2 poses of the feet. Moving through the vertices either takes a footstep, progresses the manipulation variable S, or progresses the manipulation variable and takes a footstep. In essence, the decision at each vertex is either to locomote, manipulate, or locomanipulate. Our edge costs penalizes lack of progression, taking too many steps, and deviations from suggested body paths. For instance, if we treat the biped as a mobile robot, then we would get a good guess for the body path. When using the neural network, instead of using an IK configuration trajectory to check for feasible vertices, we instead use a classifier to prune infeasible vertices and penalize edge transitions that have low feasibility. The A-star heuristic encourages the manipulation variable S to reach the value of 1 as fast as possible to obtain suboptimal but fast solutions. So here are some results. Again, we learned the local manipulation region with a classifier and use it to prune vertices and evaluate edge transition feasibility. So this is Valkyrie opening a door with a local manipulation trajectory. Of course, we can add multiple end effector constraints with this formulation. So this is Valkyrie performing a two-handed cart push. Using the classifier, we obtain fast candidate plans to the goal vertex, where we obtain an 8 to 9 times speed up when compared to not using the classifier. Because the classifier can make mistakes, we reconstruct the entire trajectory of the candidate plan to ensure that the plan is feasible and find new candidate plans if necessary. Some of our criticism is that the benefit of the neural network is lost because of this reconstruction step. This is true, but other works that use a classifier for planning tend to return the candidate plan as the final plan. But since we want to ensure feasibility, we also perform this reconstruction step and find new candidate plans as needed. If we can fully trust the classifier results, then we can skip the reconstruction step. Additionally, our approach is able to find kinodynamic local manipulation plans in less than a minute, which is much faster than other search-based or optimization approaches. In summary, our contributions are as follows. First, we introduced a novel method to compute, visualize, and learn local manipulability regions. Second, we demonstrated the fast weighted ASAR planner formulation to find feasible local manipulation plans. Thank you very much. Our code is available on GitHub. And feel free to ask me questions at stevenjj at utexas.edu.